have eggs to get out of the dough. Anyways, <laughs> we, um, this is my, you know, this is That's why they're not up here, because it's worse. And, um, there, so we did, we broke up, and he came back and proposed, and I, first thing I said, I didn't say yes or no, I said, what about kids? <laughs> I was making the space then, he said, kids would be okay. I looked at him, I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. So, and then fast forward three years into our marriage, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I had acute leukemia, so you know the story. And it's not the kind of leukemia that people typically love to tell about. So I'm very blessed to be here. And there was a moment when I was really, 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 really sick that I knew I was given a choice. And my choice was to stay because I knew I wasn't done yet. I knew I was supposed to have kids. An interesting thing was when I was at the Cleveland Clinic and they were telling me before I got really, really, really sick what all was going to happen through this recovery process and all that chemo and everything, they said, you know, by, and one of the side effects of what we're going to do is you won't be able to have children. And I said, well, you're not big enough to make that decision in my life. <laughs> I said, if my God wants me to have children, I'll have children. And they, these line of doctors, you know, they're like, got all serious. And I said, ma'am, I don't think you understand. And I said, no, I don't think you understand. <laughs> this isn't going to wreck my plan. Right? It's not going to wreck the plan. And, and so when Austin was born, of course, I took him back and said, see, you know. <laughs> experienced in my life and I realize I really have made the space and I, I really think that's such an important concept because I didn't get it when it was first presented. And then when I was in meditation, I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out because something really hit me hard and I have to say this part, I'm probably going over my time, but um, I hadn't meditated for about four years and about nine or ten months ago, I was driving home from my mom's house, believe it or not, in Columbus and um, all of a sudden it just hit me, meditate, 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 go home and meditate. I'm thinking, I don't want to meditate. I've had some pretty wild experiences. <laughs> and um, so I went home and I meditated. In the meditation it said, I heard, call Dana Cummings. I'm like, who the heck is Dana Cummings? <laughs> I really wasn't sure who that was. Yeah. And then I remember being at Cindy and Joe's one time and they mentioned him. And so I just called Cindy and said, Cindy, do you know Dana Cummings? And do you know his phone number? And she said, yeah, I have his cell phone, but he's out of town for four days. You won't be able to get hold of him. I said, okay, great. I probably told her I heard him in meditation. I was supposed to call him. And she, she, she knows me a while, so she didn't like, roll her eyes or anything. So <laughs> I the phone. I dialed Dana's number, and he actually picked up the phone. And I said, hi, Dana. This is Kim Batello. I don't know if you know me, but I think I heard you speak 10 years ago at, you know, somewhere. And by the way, will you have coffee, tea, or water with me? I heard in a meditation I was supposed to meet with you. And he goes, well, how can I turn down coffee, tea, or water? <laughs> so we sat down at coffee at Starbucks. I said, do you know why we're here? And he said, no. I said, I don't either, but when you figure it out, will you let me know? And I just knew we were supposed to meet. And it came in the meditation day. I know exactly why we met. I know exactly what this was all about. And it's actually about all of you. And it's about our children. And I didn't have time to re review this by Rick before I came up here, but I think you would agree that when our children were born, uh, when Austin was born, um, somebody mentioned to me, somebody that didn't, had not, didn't even know I had a child, that our son had a very old soul and a very, very, very old soul. And if you ever talk to Austin, you realize he's a magnificently wise young man, young boy. He's still a boy. He's got something magnificent inside of him. Madison is our woman of grace, our daughter of grace, our child of grace. They're all children, but they have a divine purpose. And Cassidy's middle name is Joy, and she was named that before she was born because she is the epitome, the epitome 
of joy. And what came to me in the meditation today was, we are in a really magnificent place here. Magnificent. And our children need you to reach out to them. They need your divine mother and father inside of you and guide, guide, spirit guide, love. If you are moved to reach out to one of our children, I invite you to because I don't think it's an accident. That's why we're here. We're so blessed by you. And blessed by you. Come on, babies. you have some things that you'd like to share about, uh, about your mom, yes? Would you like to go ladies first or gentlemen first? Ladies first. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> She's nice. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> She's loving too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 